All right. Today's an exciting day because we're finally pulling out the AC that's been taking up too much real estate in our uh, truck here for too long. So I've cut the hoses, the uh, refrigerant line's been evacuated, so all that's left to do is to pull this big old thing out. All right, storage unit successfully cut out. We now have room for the water tank. So next step will be mounting that. Space now opened up a little bit more with the air conditioning unit gone. And we've got a hole cut in the floor with some temporary floor. We're going to be putting in actual subfloor to meet up with the previously laid subfloor on that bar right there. And the bathroom is going in this little area here. Okay, so we've got the very beginnings of a frame for our bathroom, and we feel so lucky right now that we have. Uh, a little more space in the compartment or the like the the panel on the right than we do on the left. I don't know if you can see, but we have these one by threes running between, and they're both. And there's one here, but it's got some um, like drywall material on top, particle board, whatever that is. And this is sitting just a little deeper in. You see that? Like there's like space behind the frame and it's like that in in strange spots all over the ambulance where there's like varying depths of the wall and we are so lucky that we have this and actually have holes down at the bottom there so that we can run our plumbing up through the wall and we're getting ready to put in our shower mixer or the plate for the shower mixer right there um, and we'll be able to run all of our plumbing in that space so we're so thankful for that. We got the water filter in finally, so now I can actually start to do some plumbing. So you can see here what we're going for in the former oxygen tank compartment. We've got electric water heater down below. We've got the gray water tank for the sink. And then in the back here, we've got the water filter for our cold water. So the goal was to have all of the connection points inside of this compartment so that everything over here where the actual sink is, there's very limited uh, risk of leaking happening. Really the only potential failure point, failure point would be the drain for the sink here. So that's really the only place where a leak could happen in this compartment. The reason why that's important is uh, because we have our batteries down below. And so I wanna do everything I can to try and protect this bottom compartment. So that means having all the connection points in the compartment next door, it means installing a shower liner here uh, around the battery area. Uh, and then I'm actually gonna have another uh, rubber barrier here with a lip that would catch anything that, that happened in this above area. But things are starting to come together. It's exciting. All right, so plumbing continued. Now working on the other side where the uh, water's gonna come in to fill the tank and also when we're connected to the city line that water coming in as well. So, done a little bit of prototyping here to see how the pump's gonna be laid out and then where the water's gonna flow from there. So, uh, after prototyping, uh, just started building out the piping with all this hex. And the prototyping was just done with cardboard, just cutting out pieces for all the different valves that are gonna go into place and, and making sure that they fit. My goal, which is may not be possible, but was to keep everything as far right as, as I could because the shower is right above this and I would love if we could have a small gray tank on the left half of this, but we'll see if that's even doable. It's, uh, it's a really exciting day because we finally got all of the plumbing in place that we planned and the pump's wired in, so we're getting ready to start doing a whole battery of tests to see if this stuff works without leaking or breaking. And so we haven't tried anything yet, and we're going to do it on camera for uh, your viewing pleasure. <laughs> and so I'll just start by describing what's going on here, and then uh, we'll get started with testing. So we've got behind this compartment is our 30-gallon water tank. And then what we've got here are a few different things. So this is the fill dish, the gravity fill dish to fill the water tank. Uh, we can just, you know, put a hose there to, to fill that up. 
Um, we've got back here the city fill line. So if we're ever in a place that has that uh, RV park or something, we can connect that up and, and bypass the pump to use that water supply. Um, so we've got water line fills the tank. Uh, tank water comes in right here, hits this strainer for the flow jet pump. And then the pump brings the water up and through a series of valves. So we can shut off the tank uh, and pump supply here with this line, which is great, which is what we would want to do if we're ever using the city line. And then uh, we've got the city line coming in right here and then both come back down. One is, um, there's another level lever right here where I hope to have a hose attachment right here. So if we ever just, you know, need to wash something off, we can use this line real quick. Um, water continues down and we've got this one that goes out uh, towards the kitchen area for the sink and also to our water heater. And then this line is the cold shower water line and we can shut that on and off right here. And you can see we've got the plumbing started here for the shower line. Uh, once we um, start framing that up, we'll put the mixer in place and all that. So uh, the first test that we're gonna run is just filling the tank uh, to make sure that the fill dish works as expected. Um, we've got here just a hose that's hooked up to the house supply back there. And then this just makes it easy to turn the hose on and off as we're filling. So we don't spill a bunch of stuff in here. I hope that's not, I hope this is closed. All right, test number one, Let's do it. just filling the tank. I've got all the valves off. So all we're doing is filling the tank and then we will empty it. Should I be watching to see if anything leaks under there? Yeah, you should probably do that. So yeah. It'll be coming in the top white one. I'll be watching it from up here too. Okay. And then also, if you can watch just these bottom fittings. Yep. Sure not All right. Here we go. Here we go. You can see while we're waiting here, we've got some wires down here. Um, there's a heater underneath the tank so that if it drops below a certain temperature, it'll heat up our water, make sure it doesn't freeze. So these pipes and the wires all run. Oh, can we even see? Yeah, across the top of the truck, all the way across to the other side. And we'll go over there in a moment. Woo! We're journey under the truck together. We've got this one slow leak right where we would take that cap off to drain the tank anyway so it's not sealed so we're going to keep testing and then find out a solution for that because we don't want a slow drip that would take a lot of our water away after a few days driving around shake up some of the water tanks we have some little plastic cups picking up so we're going to get them all shaken up before we empty it so that maybe well, this is just entertaining. Uh. Watch me just get soaked. Gonna empty this tank, get some of the grimy stuff out, clean it out, and then uh, refill and do some testing. That's not gonna be good. Why? Okay, what's not going to be good? Why'd you say that? Because there's, since this uh, front cap is under pressure, it's not uh. easy to unscrew, and if I try too hard, I'll pull out the, uh, yeah. the back piece that's right. actually in the tank. Could we park it so that it's angled the other way, or does that not relieve any pressure? That won't. Because we're kind of angled toward the drain right now. Yeah, it won't help because the tank's full enough. Okay. So, instead of emptying things through the drain, we're going to use this this uh, valve here. You're brilliant. And so we're just rigging up a temporary line to come out of that. You're like, oh. Yeah, we'll see what happens. 
Yep, so, okay. So we're gonna try emptying the tank through the pump. We've got this line open. Just so this, <laughs> this line. Yeah. So water's gonna come out of the pump. Um, we'll open this line. It'll go into this tank. This one's closed off, so it won't go up to the shower. So are we kind of also testing the pump now? Yeah, we are. Sweet. All right. Uh, okay, so I'll we'll get in and turn it on and. Okay. Wait. Get in and turn it on. The truck. I gotta press it. Flip the switch in the truck. Oh. Um, I'm gonna check one thing over here first. Okay. What's that? This is also gonna send water in this direction. I'm just making sure that it is off. Okay. Over here. Yeah. What's the flip of the switch we need to flip in the truck? Just the switch provides power to the pump. Right, where? It's in the, in the truck. In the living space? Yeah. I'm thinking like in there. No, it's not. Okay. Okay, okay I'm gonna oh, get... Oh, damn it. What? Turn on power. Yeah, you gotta turn on power. Ready. The pump's working! What are you doing, Beth? No, I'm just waiting for the bucket to be full. That makes it sound so boring. We have water we do have being water. pumped out of our tank. This How freaking exciting. The pump is working. It's the all because of you. The water is flowing. We did great work. The bucket is filling. My wife is excited. Yes. Strain her out and get all the gunk out. Is it harder than you expected? Uh-huh. <laughs> like everything in this process. Although it is moving. Okay. Could that be a leak? There we go. Here's the strainer. There's hey, look. Stuff, there's stuff in there, too. I don't know oh, if we yeah. Can get. But, yeah. Hey. So this is why you clean your tank before installing it. All right. So, test number two the sink. What are you doing, Beth? I'm gonna open the valve first. There's right. no water coming out because we need to just get the air out of this. <sighs> what now? I turn on the jet? Yep, so you can flip the switch for the pump. And that'll clear some air out of that line first. Here, it's coming, it's coming. Sink, I hope. There it goes. Yeah, look at it. Oh, why is it black? It's better now. It's better now. <laughs> <laughs> it was like inky black. Well, let's see. Well, the, it runs through the water filter first. and make sure there's no leaking under the sink. Or maybe you can check that. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, pump is pumping. And looks like there's a pretty serious leak going here now. Let's go around and check our other compartment. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's full. Okay. You stopped it, right? Yeah, I stopped. All right. <laughs> have to remember you have a small sink gray tank. We're pretty new at this. But it doesn't look like there were any leaks in this compartment. And I don't see any leaks coming out of the sink water line. All right. All right, time to test the water heater. Testing the water heater. So, we've got a four gallon water heater, mini, mini water heater. Um, first step is to fill it and then we can plug it in and start heating the water. It should take about 30 minutes to fill all four gallons and then we'll try running that hot water at the sink and at the shower mixer. It doesn't always take 30 minutes to heat, right? Because it'll keep refilling and heating if we have it. Right, the initial heating is what takes 30 minutes. Great. 
great. All right, we've been, now we're testing the hot water. So we've had the water heater running for 20 minutes and it's taken about 15% of battery and the power usage is now down to just three amps. So that tells me that it's done heating to the ideal temperature setting that we set it at. And now the hot water is ready to test. And so if we bring it back up to max heat setting, we could see the power usage jumps way up. We're at almost 1700 wow. watts, 143 amps being drawn. And then if I bring it back down again to that ideal setting, amp draw drops way down again. So it's pretty cool to know that the, the water heater uh, adjusts once it's reached its uh, ideal temperature. Is the valve open correctly? Yeah, valve is open. It's hot water, man. How hot is it? Um, it's warm, and now I can make it pretty It's not like our house where you burn your hands. It's probably max, but this is nice. Okay. Like, I would shower in this. Awesome. Turn on the pump. I'll turn on the pump. Take a minute. Hey! Wow, that temperature is ideal. <laughs> cool. Can you help me the pump? Yeah, please. All right, and going through all of those tests, we discovered two issues. So, one is that the uh, PVC port. Uh, drain port that we're using on the tank has a small leak in it and so I think we're gonna replace the cap that's there with something a little more robust uh, and then another issue is that we had a leak here coming right out of the pump uh, right where the uh, this clear line here meets up with the fitting on the pump so this pump is supposed to get to 50 psi before shutting off automatically what we were noticing is that as pressure built this leak started happening and then started getting worse. And this tube's rated for 80 PSI, so it should be able to handle it. So what I've done is I've, I've made the tube a little bit longer uh, instead of the direct path I had before because the direct path was a little uneven and I think that was affecting things. Uh, I've also tightened things down a lot more. Uh, we're gonna run the test again and, and see if when the pressure builds, the leak stops. Now, uh... So we're just, we emptied the tank so Anthony can work on repairing the leak in that line that's attached to the pump and I'm just putting some insulation on all of these external pipes. It's just this, this neat sticky stuff, you just get a close rubber insulation. Alright, so we tested out the new uh, hose configuration here to see if we still get a leak and we still do, right at the bottom of this fitting here. So. What I'm going to do is replace that line there with this reinforced vinyl tubing uh, to see if that gives any more stability. And I'm also using some uh, more heavier duty clamps here. So I'm going to swap this out, see if we still get a leak. The uh, drain that was on the freshwater tank that had a slow drip, I've replaced the uh, the cap there uh, and just installed that so we'll see if that still leaks too after we fill this up all right all right filled the tank and I don't see any leaks happening out of this cap so I think issue one here is resolved issue number two I've got the reinforced vinyl tube installed and now I'm going to uh, let this line build pressure and see if it holds up this time. All right. And no luck. Still getting a small leak out of this bottom fitting here. Uh, and I'm beginning to wonder if, if this L shape I have coming out of the pump is not ideal for some reason. If I should just be using a straight uh, fitting coming out of there. Uh, we'll see. I'll try a couple more things. 
I'm gonna show everybody where we're putting all the stuff. You filming or taking? I'm it? filming. Oh, okay. This is all the stuff that's left to go through, including all these snakes. Okay, let's see. Someday we'll have everything have its own spot and hooks and things, but for now, uh, we've got our tools up top of this compartment. He's sorting through for what was gonna stay and go in that spot. And then down here, we're still missing Anthony's backpack. That's all our camp camping stuff and our backpacks. And I know we're in an ambulance, but sometimes we might like to go camping or sit outside. That's our electric. Actually, I can show you our kitchen. That's like, that is all our kitchen stuff and still um, need some better storage solutions, but that's what we've got right now. And our electric. Got our water heater, gray tank, and above this, we haven't built the shelves yet, but this is where we're gonna store just a little bin for laundry, and we'll put it down in the chute. And there'll be a hole cut out and a shelf above this, so I can have some more kitchen space, pantry space above. Done building out the ambulance. We're taking some select parts with us, including mostly electrical, plumbing, and other little pieces that just haven't been installed yet, including that insulation. So here's all that stuff, and on the right we're just going to keep our clothing. Eventually there's going to be holes cut there, or some kind of configuration so that we can get to our clothes from the inside, and eventually our fridge is going to go on this side and get to pull out into the living space from the inside. For those of you who have not seen, we have a cat compartment. So the cat comes in his little cat door from the inside and his litter box will sit here. Right now it's inside for him to use. And then we'll just store his litter and his food and everything down there. And here we've got our, this compartment's not done yet, uh, we've got our files. Probably keep our shoes in there for now until we figure out what to do with them. Um, got our wheel chalk and some ratchet straps over there. Um, and our extra five gallon water tank. Now let's just take a look inside. It's, we got the floor in today for the bathroom, so that's great. Next we can start putting that in, um, as well as the mixer. So again, got our kitchen with all the storage in there. Not very organized yet, but it will do for now. Toaster put in, and up there, got some stuff. And we have a pantry. Um, where are my bins? Oh, we were still working on electrical, so the bins with spices are right there. Um, we have storage underneath each of our booth seats, and storage there. Um, and over here, we each have a compartment for our personal stuff. So all my personal stuff is already packed over there. Anthony has not done it yet. And that is all we own. Just kidding. I forgot two things. One is our plumbing, so our hose and our little, we're still testing this because we've got a leak, leak, but we've got this little fitting that we'll put them in there. I also forgot to mention that we have a kayak and we have our um, shower pan still to, to install. So we're trying to mount the kayak, trying to figure out how to mount the kayak before we go. We've also got a big old, mm, big old bag of peat moss that's for a composting toilet. And we don't want to take that whole big thing because we don't have a place to put it. So we'll figure out like a smaller compartment and leave some here at my parents' house and maybe leave some at Anthony's family's so that we have some stops around the country.